Hello, everybody. In this video, we're going to look at ifs and else's inside of each other, and we're going to look more closely at returns as part of an assignment featuring the great Samuel L. Jackson. All right, let's get going. Samuel L. Jackson is the greatest actor of our generation. As much as the earth is round or the sky is blue, Samuel L. Jackson is the greatest. Yet, as recently as 2022, Samuel L. Jackson had not yet won an Oscar. Casey Affleck, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelina Jolie, Nick Cage, all of these hacks had won Oscars, but not Samuel L. Jackson. And if that doesn't tell you how much cronyism and privilege rule Holly Weird, I don't know what to tell you. In 2022, Samuel L. Jackson received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Academy. Finally, too little, too late, if you ask me. Given Holly Weird's complete inability to recognize talent, NASA engineers devised the Samuel L. Jackson algorithm to rate movies. And that's going to be your assignment here. Finally, I want to end this on a positive note, showing a clip of Samuel L. Jackson from one of the great performances in cinematic history. Enough is enough! I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday play! Everybody strap in! I'm about to open some freaking windows. Here is the lab. At this point, I'm assuming you know how to get started with the starter code, so I'm going to set that up super quick now. So now we set up our file, and we've tested that Replit is running our file. So let's get started with step one. Step one, create a function Samuel L algorithm. So to do that, this should be almost automatic for you. It's going to be def function name parentheses colon. Again, def function name parentheses colon. And in this function, we're going to have two parameters total. The first is a film that's being evaluated, which is a string. And the second is a Boolean that says whether Samuel L. Jackson is in this movie. So two parameters. When we have two parameters, that means we have two things that go inside this parentheses. You want to remember that the parameters of functions do two things, two things. One is that they get information from the outside world. And two, once that happens, they're just regular variables like any other variables. So again, regular variables, just like any other variable, which means we want to name them well. So a film, so a parameter that's a film, a good name might be P underscore film. Another good name might be P underscore movie, something like that. Again, we put the P in front of the variable to avoid funny namespace collisions that are hard to debug later. So P underscore film. And the second, second should be a Boolean that says whether Samuel Jackson is in this movie. A convention that's pretty common here is we say is. So we'll say over the P. So we'll start with a P and we'll say P is Samuel. And when we have this is here, that kind of indicates that we have a Boolean type of variable. A Boolean is going to be either true or false. Again, a Boolean is true or false. And then we'll have a return. So at this point in time, we don't know what we're going to return. But for now, I will just put return here. And what that's going to do is remind me that I need to have a return. And with that, I think we're done with step one. Two, if the movie has Samuel L. Jackson in it, it's going to be four stars. So whenever we see the words if, check, test, scenarios, your code will always have an if. So we are checking if the movie has Samuel L. Jackson in it. And we have a variable that tells us that. It comes from our parameter. So if P is Samuel equals equals to true, then the movie has four stars. And if you go back to our instructions, once we have a star rating for this movie, a final star rating for this movie, we are going to return. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to return four. Remember, the purpose of this function is to rate movies. And if Samuel L. Jackson is in the movie, obviously it's a four-star movie. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that Replit's giving me a warning. It doesn't quite like this. I could change this to is, and this error will go away, and the pep8 error will go away. But actually, it's better if there's nothing here at all, if it's just if P is Samuel. And you might be asking, well, why is that, Dr. Wu? It doesn't really make sense to me intuitively. And the reason has to do with how ifs work. If you remember, ifs are if, Boolean expression, and if that Boolean expression is true, then you do the stuff that's inside the if. You run the code inside the if. And in the special case where you have a Boolean, you're testing a Boolean, the Boolean is already true or false. So you don't need that extra equal equals to true. If you have it, it's okay. Or if you have the is, it's okay. But it's a little bit preferred to not have it. All right, so now I want to test this. So if you remember by itself, this code does nothing. Function by itself does nothing. I need to call the function. So I'll call the function. The way I call the function is the function name, parentheses. And then however many parameters the 
function has is how many arguments my function call needs to have. So I can just hard code some arguments here. I'm going to say snakes on a plane and true. So this corresponds to my movie being snakes on a plane and Samuel L. Jackson being in this movie. Now you might've heard me say before that whenever I have a return, I should save it to a variable. So I'll do that now and then print it out and run it. And you'll see it prints out of four stars as I expect. I'm going to add some descriptive information here just to make it more clear when I'm testing. And you'll see it gives an expected result. Finally, the last thing I want to do, because this is another thing that everybody always gets messed up on, is review what the returns do. The returns do two things. The return will one, exit the function, and two, substitute whatever I'm returning into the function call. So in this case, I'm substituting in the number four for the function call here. This is one of the main things that people mess up. So I'll repeat this a bunch of times. And now we're on step three, which is asking us to check to see if the movie title is longer than 20 letters, the movie's gonna be rated zero stars. So once again, when I have a test, a check, multiple scenarios, I'm going to be using an if or an elif or an else maybe. This program could work with an elif, but because my first check is with a Boolean, which has two possibilities, true and false, I'm going to parallel that with my if and else structure. So I'll make this an else, where the if has to do with the Boolean is true, and the else is if the Boolean is false. So now I will check to see if the movie title is longer than 20 characters. And if you remember, we can check lengths of lists and lengths of strings with the len function. So if p film, if length of p film is greater than 20, the film is zero stars. So I'm going to return a zero. And now let's test that out. So I have a test for the, for the scenario where it's an automatic four stars. And now I'm gonna have a test for the scenario where it's an automatic zero stars. So let's change the name of this movie. Which does not star Samuel L. Jackson. And I'm gonna relabel my test. So with this test, I'm expecting to see a zero star rating. And that is indeed what I see. Finally, I just wanna point out a structure that we see here. We have an if, and then inside of that if, we have another if. These are called nested ifs, or nested if elses. And it's a structure that you will see people do on their APCSP create tasks. Most commonly in stuff like adventure games, quiz games sometimes. Again, here we have some nested ifs which is just ifs inside of each other. So then we're on to step four, which is basically every other scenario. So for this one, we are more or less going to give you the algorithm, but you'll wanna kind of figure out and understand how this works because in the future, you'll see lots of problems that are very, very, very similar and you wanna be able to do those. So in this scenario, what we are saying is that the more letters from Samuel show up in the name of the movie, the better the movie is, of course. So step A is to create a variable to keep track of the number of stars that this movie is rated. So let's do that now. But first, we're gonna need an else, because again, you have two scenarios, the scenario where the film is over 20 characters, and that's the if, and then the else, which is everything else. So again, we're gonna do as instructions say, create a variable that keeps track of the number of stars this movie is rated. So I'll say maybe it's rating. You could also call this variable stars. That would be another good variable. As long as it's a good variable name, you're in good shape. So this is a counting variable. So I'll start it off at zero. And when I find a letter that matches, I'm going to increase this by one. So step B is to loop over the letters in the word Samuel. So hopefully you remember how to do this. For letter in Samuel. This is how I loop over characters in strings. For item in list is how I loop over items in a list. But in this case, we're looping over characters in a string, so it's for letter in Samuel. If the letter you are on, so that would be the variable letter, is in the movie name, add one to the stars variable. So the way we are gonna to check to see if the letter that we're on is in the movie name is with an if. If letter in P film, just like that. Remember, if I'm checking to see if the character is in the string, I'm going to use if character in string. And if I'm checking to see if an item is in a list, I'm going to use if item in list. So if I find that letter, the rating will go up by one. So rating equals to rating plus one. And the way that this works is I do the right side first. So whatever the rating happened to be before, I'm gonna add one. 
and then I'm going to overwrite the rating on the left. So if rating was two, I would add one to that to make it three and overwrite rating. So now rating is equal to three. Finally, I need one last check. And what do I do when I need a check? That's right, I use an if. If Samuel Jackson is not in the movie, and in this part of the code, Samuel Jackson is not in the movie, then there's no way that this movie is gonna be four stars, which makes perfect sense. So we need to check to see if the rating is more than three. So I could say if rating is more than three. Alternatively, I could say if rating is greater than or equal to four. In this scenario, it's just gonna be a three star movie. So I can do just as before, return three. And again, if you remember returns, it means that I'm out of here, no more, not doing anything more. The return means I'm done. But if that's not the case, I need to return the number of stars anyway. Lastly, I'm going to get rid of this extra return down here at the end. It was just really a placeholder to remind me that I needed that return, and now I have the return. And the very last thing I'm going to say is that in this section of code, I've assumed that all the letters of the films, I've assumed that all of these are lowercase. So now let's test. If I have a movie called Play It Again, Sam, this movie has four letters from the name Samuel, S, A, M, and L. So this will be a three-star movie. Again, even though it's got four letters, no movie without Samuel Jackson can score higher than three stars. And let's test it out. And indeed, it's a three-star movie as I expect. And finally, we'll do one more test, Star Wars. So Star Wars has an S, an A, so two letters from the name Samuel. So I expect Star Wars, the original, to be a two-star movie. And when I run the test, it is. Finally, just a note on this type of algorithm, where I have a four and an if inside the four, you'll use this algorithm all the time. Maybe I'm searching for all the vowels in a word, looking for all the times a certain number of letter shows up in the words. If I'm trying to solve that kind of problem, it's pretty much this algorithm. Be sure you can recognize similar problems. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.